Hey there everyone, today I have a huge review for you all, and this has pretty much been reviewed by everyone and their cat so far. The freaking Dillinger Escape Plan, One of Us is the Killer. Um, for this review, obviously, wearing my Dillinger Escape Plan hoodie, couldn't be wearing anything else really. And um, now, to get stuck in, the Dillinger Escape Plan are a mathcore band from New Jersey, and have been around for really quite some time. The band first came about in 1997, and released their first album, Calculating Infinity, in 1999, and that's quite some time ago. But the reason I call this review huge is because the Linda Escape Plan have basically helped pioneer mathcore and also influence a whole bunch of musicians in the sort of technical metal realms. Back on the subject of Calculating Infinity, it was kind of a really aggressive, genre-defining piece of music. It really was a debut that turned a lot of heads. It was incredibly aggressive, energetic, and spazzy. It was also a very dizzying affair that um, uh, basically it demonstrated some incredibly flashy playing and incorporated elements of hardcore, punk, metal, and like even jazz to a certain degree as well. Since its release in 1999, it has become somewhat of a cult classic. Um, after the release, they actually parted ways with the vocalist and made an EP with Mike Patton on vocals, which um, only solidified their status within the realm of experimental and alternative metal. Moving on, Dillinger have actually gone through quite a few lineup changes, arguably the most significant one being picking up Greg on vocals between the debut Calculate Infinity and Miss Machine. The most notable difference between these albums was the use of clean vocals and a much larger sort of emphasis on melody and these kind of really soaring epic moments. This obviously had some polarising results amongst the fans and for me personally it turned out very well. Miss Machine is actually my favourite Dillinger record to date thanks to some incredibly strong songwriting, flashy playing and just a silly amount of blood pumping punk energy. After this Dillinger Escape Plan parted with another member actually, this time it was drummer Chris Penny who went on to um, uh, go on to play in Coheed and Cambria actually. And for the next album, they brought on someone called Gil Sharon. The third album was somewhat of a return to the calculating days for the band. Sure, it still had the melodic tracks, incredibly melodic ones actually, such as Black Bobblegum and Dead as History. But ultimately, it had some seriously dizzying and pummeling tracks on it too. Also, it kind of felt a bit more complete than the previous two albums, with a bunch of interludes and kind of jazzier moments that sort of went back to the original a bit. For the fourth album and previous release, they actually changed drummers again this time to the very young and incredibly talented Billy Reimer. This record was called Option Paralysis and is somewhat unique compared to the previous three releases. It was melodic for sure, but it had a lot of unique elements, including kind of this really subtle atmosphere that surrounded the whole thing, to be honest. Um, it was sort of more, far more apparent in the second half of this album with tracks like Widower, Chinese Whispers, and the closer, which was a phenomenal closer, Parasitic Twins. Now, I do want you all to take a note first, um, and that is, despite the fact that I've made each album sound sonically different, they all, without a doubt, were certainly Dillinger albums. Dillinger are one of the most consistent bands around, especially considering they've gone on for so long, and that kind of puts them along the ranks of bands like Converge as well, which could be perhaps why they are compared a lot, especially considering they sound so vastly different. But anyway, this brings us up to the current year, 2013, and Dillinger have released One of Us is the Killer. To start off, I would like to mention that this album is certainly a revert to the Mish Machine kind of era, but it definitely borrows slightly from each album so far, just kind of picking up little bits here and there from each album. Throughout this album, you can expect to hear all the usual Dillinger traits and kind of stamp marks, um, such as the intensely dizzying riffs and patterns, played with an absurd amount of energy and perhaps some of the strongest songwriting to date as well, I would argue. There are, of course, tracks on this album that deviate from that traditional Dillinger kind of sound. Tracks like the title track, One of Us is the Killer, has one of the biggest hooks I've heard all year and um, is probably the most accessible song Dillinger have ever put out, but it certainly still stays within their sound. It certainly doesn't compromise any of their sound, even a tiny bit. Another track that deviates quite heavily from the um, usual Dillinger sound is Nothing's Funny, which has a bit of a jazzy feel in the riff, especially in the opening, which kind of reminds me a lot of Mike Patton's work, specifically Mr. Bungle, which I know is a pretty common comparison for this song, but to be honest, it's just a very correct comparison. As I previously said, there are plenty of songs that are just traditional, blood-pumping, energetic tracks that Dillinger are kind of known for. For example, the opening track, Prance, which I, like I said, I spoke about in a video. But to be honest, the video that I put out, how many ever weeks ago or months ago it was, the track has actually grown on me a lot since I put that out, but my opinion more or less still stays the same on it. Directly afterwards, there is When I Lost My Bet, and personally, I think this is one of Dillinger's most 
like, blood-curdling, intense affairs pretty much ever. It opens up with these super hard-hitting, syncopated hits on pretty much every instrument available. And over the course of 3 minutes and 40 seconds, they explore a ton of really odd, spazzy, technical grooves. But despite that that sounds like the kind of thing you would really sit back and analyse and just look at from a technical perspective, Dillinger, I feel, have always delivered in such a way that kind of just gets people's bodies moving and blood pumping, really. One thing I really want to draw attention to on this album is how far Billy Reimer has come since Option Paralysis. He's always been a fantastic drummer, but this album, he really just smashes his performance to pieces. As I have said on the Prance review, I feel like the other D uh, Dillinger drummers have always been a bit robotic and mechanical, perhaps. Again, that's not necessarily knocking them. They were fantastic too, but this record just kind of confirms that Billy Reimer is my favourite uh, Dillinger drummer, really. He just jams the shit out of nearly every track on this entire album, which brings me to the reason I just prefer Billy. And that is that when he plays these tracks, it really feels like he's just kind of feeling his way around the kit and just jamming as opposed to pl only playing technical music, which of course there is no shortage job on this album. But like I said, despite it being so technical, it just feels like he's just sitting there jamming, just kind of fitting fills in when he can, just really feeling and using his dynamics to really show kind of what he's capable of. And all of these techniques kind of displayed on the opening for the track Understanding Decay, which is another super intense affair that borrows from nearly every album in, a, in some way or another. For example, the intro is very ironworksy with the kind of breakbeat-esque drums from Billy Reimer to the kind of widdly guitar lines around the one minute line that are very calculating. And after that, it hits some very nice um, Miss Machine-esque melodies and grooves. One of the last tracks on this album, Cl uh, Crossburner, is the longest one, sitting at five minutes, and it shows that Dillinger know how to write a longer track, not that we didn't already know that. But regardless, they, they keep this one incredibly engaging, and they don't even come close to threatening to compromise their sound at all to write this track. It's a bit slower for sure, but it displays some really intense bass riffage, and super sharp, jagged guitar chords that just shred through the speakers. And I also really adore Greg's vocal contribution on this song. It really feels like he showcases a lot of his vocal range and ability. He uses some really soaring melodic vocals, intense screams, and whisper quiet sung moments too. Overall, I have almost nothing to complain about on this album, because it's undoubtedly a Dillinger record that's just incredibly engaging throughout, and it's just so consistent as well. It is an intense and melodic affair while drawing from all the records they've previously put out. For example, the 8th track CH, Bunch of Digits, ARS, to me, feels like an interlude taken straight out of Iowork, and also, again, for me, is just perfectly placed. I will say I also loved some of the sounds coming out on this album. Dillinger used quite a few strange sounds throughout, for example, the very oddly placed bell strikes in When I Lost My Bet. The almost circus backing vocals on Prancer as well are really well done. As far as criticism goes, I will say this album is gagging for a more climactic closer. After the threat posed by nuclear weapons ends, it just kind of feels like, well is that it? I don't think the fact that the song kind of ends incredibly abruptly helps at all in that regard. Also, as I mentioned in my Prancer review, I feel like Dillinger haven't necessarily brought anything too new to the table on this one. By the end of the day, it is a very well made record, the production choices help a lot in this for sure, they are raw enough to give the punk all of its kind of feel and energy without making the soaring melodies lose anything at all. I do also feel like this is some of uh, the strongest songwriting we've seen from Dillinger yet, and it's also, as a lot of their other albums to be fair are, a incredibly well performed album. And all of this put together, to be honest, for me at least, is the best Dillinger Escape Plan album, and I'm happy to give it a 9 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Discuss the album below, I'd love to hear your opinions on what you thought of this, obviously, because, um, it's a very big release. I think it's quite an important one as well. Dillinger is such a large and important force within technical music that, you know, this, this is a pretty large release. There's no doubt about it. So I'd love to hear all your opinions on it and I'll catch you guys and girls later.